Hello there and welcome to Upper 6 Further Maths. Here we're looking at sum of complex number series, exercise 1e. We're on part 2 and in this video we're looking at infinite summations. So very similar to the last video that you've just watched on part 1 where it's finite summations, this one is infinite summations. So we're going to be using a slightly different formula to add up this infinite series. It's going to be roughly similar, something like s equals and then some complex numbers here. Uh, and we're going to be asked to show something uh, trigonometric. So uh, let's get stuck into this question. The question is s equals 1 plus a half e to the theta i plus a quarter e to the 2 theta i plus 1 over 8 e to the 3 theta i plus dot 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 up to infinity this time. So it's slightly different from the last question where the last uh, video stopped at a certain point. This one is just going to extend to infinity. So what we're going to do first is recognize that this is an infinite geometric summation. The value of a, that's the starting value of a summation, is 1. The r value, which is the common ratio between the terms you're summating, is a half e to the theta i. And this formula here only works if r is strictly less than 1. And no matter what value of theta we have, because it's going to be multiplied by this half at the front, it's always going to be less than 1. So this condition here is satisfied. So we can tick that condition off, so we can use this formula eventually. There's no n value this time. n would be how many terms you have in your sequence, but in this case it's infinite. So we're going to now apply this formula here where we add up a geometric sequence and this is what we get. We get 1 over 1 minus um, and then the r value which is a half e to the theta i. And the first thing it makes sense to do is just to times top and bottom by 2 just to make sure that uh, we haven't got any triple tiered fractions anywhere. So this is what it looks like. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to turn it into something trigonometric. So I'm going to rewrite the um, exponential form of the complex number here in modulus argument form. So it's going to be 2 over 2 minus and then the modulus argument form of this complex number. The next thing I'm going to do is just reorganize those brackets to group together the real parts and the imaginary parts. After that, it's going to be timesing by the complex conjugate of the denominator, which is the real part, and then change the middle between the real part and the imaginary part to a plus uh, on the top and the bottom. Now, if we expand out the brackets on the top and the bottom, rationalizing the denominator here, we're going to get 2 times 2, which is 4, 2 times minus cos theta is minus 2 cos theta, and 2 times i sine theta is 2 i sine theta. Then we need to multiply the denominators together, so it's going to be 4 minus 4 cos theta plus cos squared theta. Then we're going to get this bit multiplied by this bit, and then this bit multiplied by this bit. But because one's a positive, one's a negative, that multiplication will cancel out. And all we'll be left with then is minus i sine theta times i sine theta. That will give us minus i squared sine squared, but i squared is 1, so that will simplify just to sine squared theta. We can then group together sine squared theta plus cos squared theta to make 1 using that trigonometric identity, and there we have it. Voila, we've proved that s is equal to this trigonometric thing here. Moving on to part b of a typical question like this. So we've stored our answer up here in red. Let p equal this summation here, let q equal this summation here, and part b is to show that s is equal to p plus qi. So let's write it out, p plus qi, and adding together in strategic order, 1 goes at the front, then we'll factorise out the half from both of these two expressions here, then the quarter from these two expressions here, and then it will carry on dot dot dot. We can then write these modulus argument form complex numbers in exponential form, and you see we have exactly the same as what we had in S. Then we're going to move on to part C, which is hence find a trigonometric expression for P and Q. So earlier on we saw that S is equal to P plus QI, so P is the real part of S, Q is the imaginary part of S. So if we can break up uh, S into the real part over the denominator, add the imaginary part over the denominator, then uh, this is what it looks like. 
So P is obviously the real part and Q is obviously the imaginary part. So there we are, that's the, uh, that's the answer to this question here. Let's move on to a question of our own to have a go at then. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so let's give this question a go then. So let's first write out what C plus IS is, but adding it in a certain strategic order. Let's do the one first, and then we'll pull out the third from these two terms here. So it's going to be add one third cos theta plus I sine theta. Then let's add one ninth, factorizing that out to the front, add cos theta cos two theta plus I sine two theta. And let's just do one more then, one over 27, and then factorizing that out from these two components here, cos three theta plus I sine three theta. Now let's rewrite out these three, so we we'll do a plus dot dot dot, and then we'll rewrite out these complex numbers in exponential form plus 1 over 9e to the 2 theta i, plus 1 over 27e to the 3 theta i. And then what we'll do is we'll spot that this is a um, geometric summation where a is equal to 1, the starting value is 1, and the common ratio each time is to multiply by a third e to the i theta. That will create the power uh, so that will create the sequence of a third, a ninth, a twenty-seventh, and it will also add on a theta i each time. So therefore, if we use the formula a over 1 minus r, it will equal 1 over 1 minus 1 third e to the theta i, which is then equal to, uh, times top and bottom by 3, 3 over 3 minus e to the theta i. So there we are, that's the answer to part A. Let's move on to part B then. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so let's start with a 3 over 3 minus. And the first thing I'll do is I'll rewrite out this uh, exponential form of a complex number in modulus argument form. So cos theta plus i sine theta. Now the next thing I'll do is I'll rewrite this out, but just reorganizing the brackets. So it's going to be 3 over, I'm going to put the real bits together, and the imaginary bits together. So it would be minus i sine theta. Remember that when there's a minus in the front of this bracket, uh, both of those terms in the bracket turn to negatives. Then I'm going to times top and bottom by the complex conjugate. So it's going to be the real part and then you change the symbol between the real part and the imaginary part, so that's going to be plus i sine theta over, and same thing on the denominator, because when you rationalize the denominator, you don't actually change the value that you're um, rationalizing, just write it in a, in a different form. So expand the brackets here, we're going to get 9 minus 3 cos theta, and then plus 3i sine theta, and then that's going to be over, uh, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times minus cos theta is minus 3 cos theta, but minus another 3 cos theta, that'll make it minus 6 cos theta, then plus cos squared theta, then when you multiply this thing here and this thing here, and then this thing here and this thing here, one will be a positive, one will be a negative, so we don't really need to write that, but we will need to multiply the last two things together, and that will make it plus sine squared. It will make it minus i squared sine squared, but the i squared will turn to a minus one, so a double negative will make this positive. So we'll carry this on on the other side here. We'll group together the sine squared and the cos squared, and we'll add it to this nine here to make it 10. So at the moment, we've got three, so no, we haven't, we've got nine minus three cos theta um, plus three i sine theta over, and it would be 10 minus six cos theta. So when we break this up into real part and imaginary parts, 
Let's just re really make this obvious. Plus three sine theta over 10 minus six cos theta times i. We are clear that that bit there is the real part. So this bit equals c and this bit here is equal to s. It's the real part that is the real part in your trigonometric expression and s is the imaginary part here. Okay, so that's all we're going to go through in this video then. Hopefully that uh, broke down exercise 1e into two more manageable videos there. And uh, make sure you have plenty of practice at exercise 1e. There's lots of different questions in there, lots of difficult questions. One with a tricky choose function in there that you definitely must have a go at. But uh, do persevere, do look at the um, solution bank for answers and uh, make sure you persevere through this uh, difficult exercise. Thanks very much for watching.